The geologic theory of uniformity was birthed during a time of revolution. For over 25 years from the beginning of the French Revolution in 1789 to the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, Europe was in turmoil. France beheaded her king and queen. Many revolutionaries in their turn went to the scaffold too. Spain, Italy, Germany, Austria, and Russia became battlefields. The British Isles were even in danger of being invaded, and Britain's fleet fought at Trafalgar. The tyrant, Napoleon Bonaparte, who had sprung up from the Revolutionary Army. After 1815, there was a universal desire for peace and tranquility. No wonder that in the climate of reaction to the eruptions of revolution and the Napoleonic Wars, the theory of uniformity became popular and soon dominant in the natural sciences. According to this theory, the development of the surface of the globe has been going on through all the ages without any disturbances. The process of very slow change that we observe at present has been the only process of importance from the beginning. This theory, first advanced by Hutton in 1795 and Lamarck 1800, was elevated to its present position as a scientific law by Charles Lyell, a young attorney whose interest in geology was to make him the most influential person in that field, and by Lyell's disciple and friend, Charles Darwin. Darwin built his theory of evolution on Lyell's principle of uniformity. Wind and solar heat and rain little by little crumble the rocks in the highlands. Rivers carry the sediments to the sea. The land is lowered by this process, which continues for ages until it turns a vast region into sedimentary rock. Then the mass, massive earth as if in a slow breathing process, every phase of which requires eons, again slowly rises, the bottom of the sea subsides, and the crumbling of the rock begins all over again. The land comes up in an elevated plateau, the subsequent action of water and wind cuts furrows, and little by little the highland changes into a range of mountain peaks more eons, and these heights crumble too, wind and rain carrying them grain by grain into the sea. The shallow sea approaches, encroaches on the land, then slowly retreats. No great catastrophes intervene to change the face of the earth. Although sporadic volcanic action occurs, Lyell did not consider it to have an effect in changing the face of the earth comparable in importance to that of rivers, wind, and waves of the sea working slowly over immense periods of time. The scientific principle which insists that whatever does not occur at the present has not occurred in the past is a self-imposed limitation. Rather than a principle in science, it is a statute of faith, which is more and more being brought into question as science advances.